I'm Nito the GNTG and welcome to Raging G. Time for some DC history, specifically about the New 52. For people that don't know, DC Comics had a period that the New 52 logo was standing proudly in every corner. At this time of this review, we're in the rebirth age. But for this video, we'll talk a little bit more about the New 52. This was the start for a new age for DC, where they rebooted everything removing many established stories from the legacy of its characters, but choosing a few of them that will stay in their continuity and reintroducing old characters, either dead or alive, with big changes due to an event with a fresh coat of paint. A small example is Barbara Gordon. That before the New 52, she was Oracle, but due to the reboot, she returned as Batgirl. I will dive a bit more about her history in a later episode, so wait for that. If you are wondering why they chose the number 52, there are many reasons. One of the most successful and controversial series of DC was 52. 52 comics that explained many things after characters like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman and many more disappeared due to an event that lasted for one year with one issue every week as you can guess. Another example is Crisis on Infinite Earth, one of the big events of DC that began in 1985 and once completed in 1986, that split the multiverse into 52 different versions. Something that is a part of DC's continuity and with multiversity expanding a lot into that with a great map with many details and huge differences between its universe. But that reboot infuriated a large part of their fans since they removed a huge part of the history of almost every character people knew and followed from when they were kids. But on the other hand, it managed to bring in new people who were able to enjoy these comics since they didn't have to know the huge legacy of which one. You knew the character? You could pick one of their new 52 comics and start reading and fully enjoy it since it was new reader friendly. I started reading DC because of this, but once I learned a few things about its character, I started going back, reading big events and the great stories with the characters I liked the most. Today we'll talk about the event that led to the new 52 and specifically Flashpoint. <laughs> It was created by Jeff Jones, one of my favorite creators, born on the 25th of January in 1973. Even as a kid, he loved DC's heroes and when he grew up, he managed to write for many of those, like Green Lantern, Flash, Teen Titans, and he even wrote many big events of DC like Blackest Night, Infinite Crisis, 52, Flashpoint, Forever Evil, Dark Side War, and he played a major role in the current Rebirth line. Jeff Jones managed to write excellent stories, showing that he loves the characters and many say that when he is in a comic, it's the best time for said character. He manages to connect all their stories with an amazing way that combines action, character development and powerful scenes. Specifically, he managed to make Barry Allen the most known Flash when he was forgotten for many years and gave DC a huge part of their lore and specifically the Lanterns, since with Blackest Night, he introduced the emotional spectrum with the creation of many other colors, like the Red Lanterns, the Blue Lanterns, the Indigo Lanterns and many more. Concepts and ideas that are a huge part of DC's history even to this day. Of course DC rewards his hard work by making him the president and chief creative officer of DC Comics, meaning that everything must go through him and he is also responsible for how the company appears to the public. Another notable thing is the creation of Courtney Whitmore, aka Stargirl a character that has a deep connection with him since he said that this character was bait on his sister that lost her life due to an airplane accident. The artist of Flashpoint is Andy Kubert, born on the 27th of February in 1962 and he has worked in many DC comics since 1980. Marvel fans know him as well though since he has worked in many of their titles like Ultimate X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, Wolverine, Thor, Conan the Barbarian and many more. Since 2005, he has an exclusive contract with DC and he works only for them. He helped with the creation of Damian Wayne, the son of Batman, and wrote many comics with the Waynes like Batman, Batman vs Predator, Damian, son of Batman, Detective Comics and many more. Also, for all the aspiring artists out there, he's studying in the Kubert School that was created by his father. It focuses in the art of animation and designs and many people that graduated from it managed to work in the comic industry. Flashpoint is an event that began and ended in 2011. There was a main story comprised by 5 issues and 16 tie-ins, with many being 3 issues or simple one-shots. They had many details about this world, but it's not mandatory to read all of them in order to understand Flashpoint, but they explain many background things and many details. They help a lot to learn how this world works and what is different from the one we knew. 
This story involves Barry Allen waking up one day in a different world with no powers and everything was altered. There was no Justice League, no Superman and a huge number of heroes we knew never existed. Wonder Woman was in war with Aquaman, destroying a big part of Europe in the crossfire and the weirdest thing. Barry's mother was alive. From there on out we see Cyborg trying to create a team to defeat Wonder Woman and Aquaman since they can potentially destroy the entire world with millions already dead from their war. Of course, we see Batman. But it's not Bruce, it's Thomas Wayne. Because in this world Bruce died and Thomas becomes a vigilante that is a danger to the criminals since he is not trying to capture them but he kills them instead. Barry finds out quickly what is happening and goes to Batman thinking he is the same one as the one in his world to ask for his help. A weird but wonderful thing is that once Thomas learns that in the world where Barry came from his son is alive, he becomes an ally trying to help Barry even though he may die. It shows how much he loved his son. And this is a big part of this comic since Barry has lost his mother and he sees her alive and Thomas has lost his son but helps him even though he will never see him again. It's kind of wonderful how they managed to show the depth of those characters with things like that because this father-son dynamic of Bruce and Thomas shows up in other comics as well like in Convergence that they show a meetup of these two characters and in the Button storyline where they show great respect. Of course Thomas works with Barry to regain his powers and help to prepare a team using his memory that slowly disappear. This way he finds Superman who exists in this world but his ship fall in Metropolis and not Smallville, killing thousands in the process and starting a huge chain of events. The comic continues to show our heroes recruiting more characters like Sazam, who here is a group of kids instead of just Billy. Cyborg, who they tricked into helping them find Superman and was locked by the American government and experimenting on him and a few more. The story ends with a big fight with reverse flash with a huge plot twist that we see it from the first moments of the comic but not in the way you think. I'm not going to spoil it but it's something unexpected and sad. But before moving on I'd like to talk about something that will confuse some people and it's not a spoiler. I'll talk a little bit about the double spread that exists right before the end of the comic and it's about this one. There's a character saying that time has split into three timelines and now they'll be combined into one to fight the upcoming danger. This character is called Pandora and she was created by Jeff Jones and Andy Kubert and as you can guess it's Pandora that opened the box with all the evils and released it to the world leaving only hope behind. She was a character that appears suddenly in Flashpoint and after that she was the background of every Zero issue of the New 52. She had a major role in the next big event of DC but we'll talk about it in another episode. After that the new timelines were the three companies that combined with the new 52, specifically DC Comics, Vertigo with characters like Swamp Thing and Constantine and Wildstorm with characters like Grifter. With this reboot DC absorbed those two companies and added many characters from these companies to their continuity. Vertigo still exists though and they are making comics even today. As you can see Flashpoint is an amazing comic but unfortunately it's not for everyone. There are many things that are kinda hard to understand, especially for newcomers. But there is a way to enjoy it though, because it was made into an animated movie called Flashpoint Paradox and it's one of the best of its kind, with excellent animation and an amazing soundtrack. It has a quick style of directing and storytelling that manages to move the plot fast, manages to explain and making the viewer to fully understand what is happening using many plots from the times of Flashpoint and removing characters and plots that are not so important or they don't have anything to do with the story like Pandora. After you see the movie I suggest you to read this comic as well since the one story complements the other creating a big and great event with well written dialogues having depth but not overly confusing with detail and great colored art and a sad ending. Flashpoint is a part of the history of DC Comics that you should read if you are fans of the company or even the characters that appear in it or if you want to read a comic that shows how much depth those characters can have since many people tend to make fun of them just because they think they wear colorful full body spandex suits and solve their problems only with punches. I'm NTG and until next time keep reading! And that was all for this episode, if you liked it please subscribe to see videos similar to this one, watch my previous videos or leave a comment down below for what comic you want me to talk about in my next episode. See ya on my next videos, bye!